All right, Tim, I think this is actually a Tim one. What are your thoughts on NVIDIA's tensor cores in DLSS? And now that FSR 2.0 seemingly provides similar image reconstruction and performance gains without the need for specialized cores. They are both using different techniques. However, it makes the tensor cores in DLSS look pointless in the same slash very similar fidelity uh, can be achieved in FSR 2.0 without them. So this is a mm. this is going to be a <laughs> bit of a, a hot button topic this oh, one going forward. Probably. I, I mean, I think this question maybe minimizes the gap between DLSS and FSR 2.0. They are very close, but DLSS, in my opinion, is still better. So if you're sort of looking at image quality and you're sort of thinking, well, you know, it makes the tensor cores look pointless, they still do have the superior technology in some circumstances. A lot mm -hmm. of circumstances is very close, but in some sort of edge cases where you're really looking at like, taking 1080p up to 4K, I think DLSS has the edge there. So when you sort of think about that and you're like, well, they did it on tensor cores, but they are doing it better, you kind of in some ways can't criticize them too much. I think if FSR was better and also not using tensor cores, then the tensor core approach would look pretty silly, but I don't think we're quite there yet. However, you know, I guess AMD's approach has a lot of strengths that is hopefully going to see it adopted in a wide number of games and support on a wide number of hardware. I certainly think that going with a wide approach makes more sense for these technologies. You kind of do want to support them across a, a wide variety of hardware. So from that sense, you know, I guess it's a, a positive achievement for AMD. They've certainly done it. It's impressive in my opinion that they've been able to do it without specialized hardware. But then again, you know, another sort of con is that they took ages to do it. Mm -hmm. So NVIDIA had DLSS 2.0 ready sort of start of 2020, FSR 2.0 sort of early to mid 2022. So it's quite a gap there as well. So yeah, I guess moving forward, it sort of does reduce the need for tensor cores if image reconstruction like it can be done without them. But if NVIDIA can keep having the edge in terms of image quality and maybe they can improve performance, who knows, then I guess they can still continue to justify their method and using tensor cores in that way. So yeah, we'll just have to see how these technologies progress and yeah, which one, you know, maybe we sit here in a couple of years and FSR 2.0 is is better in all areas, but we just can't say that just yet. Yeah, I guess it's, maybe they're angling from the point of it's got specialized hardware, which takes up silicon real estate. Yeah. And it's been this big thing and AMD has got very close without requiring any special hardware. So at what point does it become a bit pointless having specialized hardware if it's only that much better? Which I'm not saying is the case now, but if they if FSR also continues to get better and they get to the point where it's doesn't really matter which one you use, um, I think at that point that would be where DLSS effectively dies. And I'm not suggesting that's going to happen. Um, a lot of that comes down to game support and yeah, how close they end up getting. But yeah, it's an interesting one. If they if they require specialized hardware to get a small improvement. Mm. And I mean, th th this is all the sort of thing about, and we've talked about this on the channel before, about how, I guess in our opinion, the tensor cores came first. Yeah. So like the chicken and egg it's, sort of yeah. thing. I don't think DLSS was designed and then they're like, oh, we now need to put tensor cores in the <laughs> GPU. It's The GPU was designed with tensor cores because they wanted a very similar architecture that they could use for their consumer GPUs and their server GPUs. Mm -hmm. And obviously the AI acceleration stuff helps significantly for things like data center and even for some, you know, professional workloads, not mm -hmm. gaming, but, you know, you sort of... Yeah, they were know, trying to make it useful. They were trying to make it appeal to gamers. Yeah, so, they, so they could, they're yeah. like, well, how do we sell tensor cores to gamers? We're going to mm -hmm. need some feature that uses this. So then DLSS was one of the technologies that mm -hmm. they debuted. The first version was terrible. They had to completely redo it for version 2.0. And now we're currently where we're at. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I sort of see a similar parallel to G-Sync, where G-Sync also required dedicated mm -hmm. specialized hardware and then eventually, you know, AMD, VESA, they came out with their more open approach that worked on a much wider range of scalers, was much cheaper to implement, mm -hmm. and then you saw less and less need for G-Sync hardware. There are still some monitors that use G-Sync because there are a few small advantages, but generally speaking, most monitors support the more wider technology. So. I think you can sort of look at this situation with these upscalers and look at G-Sync and you sort of see two things. So I agree. I think if if it gets to the point where 
FSR is in a lot of games. Mm -hmm. It gets very close, closer than it is today to DLSS. Then the whole using specialized hardware thing just becomes more and more of a negative for using DLSS. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'll see how that one plays out, I guess.